question for you, if you're comfortable answering it, if not, absolutely no worries. Um, Earlier in your career, you were supposedly somewhat secretive about how you got your tone. I was just curious. <laughs> Again, if you're not comfortable, I'm not asking you to like put you on the spot. What made you uncomfortable about sharing that? Um, the only thing that made me uncomfortable about it was at first was that when the first album came out, everybody on earth came to me what are you playing through exactly how and what through what and everything so that I can get that tone. And I was thinking, man, nobody's even heard us yet. I don't want everybody still in my tone yet. <laughs> Nobody even knows who we are. I don't want you to be the one that does it. It's my They tone. discover you using yeah. my tone instead of me. Yeah, I totally yeah. get Yeah, I get that. That's man. how I felt at first, which was kind of silly to feel that way because I found out over time, it, 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 people who play through my rig don't sound anything like me at all. It didn't matter. Spoiler alert, turn back now before it's too late. This mission is doomed. Anyway, we're going to damn the torpedoes and we're going to do this thing. Welcome back, everybody. This is the episode you all have been waiting for. Uh, we're in search of the Holy Grail of Ty Tabor's early King's X tone. Or, you know, not. But uh, we'll do what we can. We're going to try and put this together. So uh, this episode, um, what we're going to do here is we need to fit in the final puzzle piece. Um, probably the most important one of his, uh, of his rig back in the day. He used the preamp of a Lab Series L5 guitar amplifier. And what we're going to do, what we're going to do, um, we're going to look for stuff. Hold on. What we're going to do is put together this Ion FX, um, I don't know if you can even call this a pedal, this thing's humongous. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, no. This is the uh, enclosure I got for it. King Kong, and uh, by comparison, here's a enclosure for a Klon, so yeah, this thing ain't no joke. But this is supposed to simulate the preamp of a Lab Series L5 amplifier. But the second reason was that I only had a couple of Lab Series amps, and they didn't make them anymore. And if I let that out, they would disappear, and I didn't have enough for backup. So uh, I kept it quiet until I had enough, and then I told people what I was playing. Gotcha. So uh, look at that. Good times. All right. So, um, that being said, let's get the elephant out of the room here. Um, was kind of hesitant about this, but uh, this is the only place you can get this. It's from Ion FX. Um, have not featured any Ion FX builds on my channel because I did build a few, but none of them have worked. That being said, uh, I don't think it's Ion FX's fault. I think it's operator error on my part. The ones I built, I think I built a Nobles. And that's got all sorts of wacky um, capacitors in it. And I probably did not use the ones, you know, um, I substituted ceramic when they wanted poly or vice versa. And, I mean, it worked, but it, you know, was kind of unusable. And then the other one I built, I believe, was a, uh, like a Black Sabbath pedal. And that had surface mount um, transistors and stuff. And, yeah, again, it worked, but uh, it wasn't quite right, so... But again, probably not their fault, probably the Tone Priest's fault. So uh, what we're going to do with this one, I uh, took the time. I took their, uh, their this thing here, it was a bill of materials, and uh, they have a function on their website. You can export that straight into Mouser and buy the exact parts that they recommend. Um, however, a lot of the parts that they asked for were no longer available on Mouser. But I very carefully found, you know, some things they just changed the part number or, you know, were um, phased out in favor of newer something around it. But I did uh, did my best to find exact substitutes for everything. So uh, I believe that's what all this crap is right here. And got some stuff from China. Uh, the parts are not on the list for Mouser. Some of these things, even though they say in here, you know, there's no unobtainium. Yeah, there kind of is some unobtainium. Um, double gang pots with a reverse taper. 
that's a little bit of unobtainium. Uh, I don't have reverse taper on these, so the knobs are going to work backwards. And then the last pile of junk came from Antique Electronics. So hopefully this works because the board itself is like 25 bucks. But once you add in the enclosure and all the uh, components and stuff, this is like a $100 pedal, which, you know, may not sound like a much if you're used to buying pedals off of uh, GuitarCenter.com. But uh, if you're building a pedal, that's, a, that's kind of pricey. So uh, what else do we need to talk about? Oh, yeah, they mentioned, um, yeah, I said read this first. Yeah, definitely want to read this first if this is a project you're interested in undertaking. Um, but they mentioned that this pedal requires an adapter that puts out 9 volts AC, not DC. And that they say um, it's the same power supply used for the Line 6 for their large digital modeling pedals such as the DL4. Well, here's the power supply for the Line 6 DL4. Output 12 volt DC. And another heads up on that, it is center positive, so... Yeah, that would be bad if you bought this thing, weren't paying attention, plug this into your giant friggin' project here, and it would have, you know, definitely not worked. May have even blown it up. <laughs> and also, it's center positive, so you can't plug this into your, you know, your Kong pedal, because uh, most guitar effects pedals are center negative. But anyway, so what I think we're going to do here is... Uh, I'm not going to film everything bit by bit because this thing will be an epic longer than Ben Hur and Lawrence of Arabia combined. The trick, William Potter, is not minding that it hurts. But, um, see some of my other uh, videos. We got the Electric Mistress, we got the Kettle and Bread Naga Viper clone, and we have the Clone Clone Kit. Uh, if you want to learn how to solder and, you know, a bunch of other... Oops, just broke the clon. That's five grand I didn't need. We have a bunch of other uh, little tidbits and nuggets of uh, how to build an effects pedal if you're doing it by hand. And they may be helpful. Or may not. You may just waste your time. Who knows? But anyway, if all that sounds interesting to you... Oh, check this out. This came with... Uh, this came from uh, Amplified Parts with the Hammond Enclosures. Look at that. How awesome is that? For anybody that doesn't know his teeth there, that's the schematic symbol for a transformer. That's awesome. That's a great tattoo right there. I think I'm going to go do that first. Get that on my forehead. But anyway, here we go. We're going to hopefully put this together, insert the last puzzle piece into our quest for the Holy Grail, or an Holy Grail. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. So if that sounds interesting to you, and I'm not sure why it would, but if it does, hang tight. Here we go. All right, so I'm on the ionfx.com website looking at this project. I needed to print a picture. And uh, here's some interesting information. If you don't want to go through all this rigmarole and you just want to go on Reverb and buy a Lab Series amplifier, um, this, you don't need to get the L5. They have a bunch of different amplifiers, and here's what they all do. So uh, check them out. They're usually pretty inexpensive. All righty. Here we go. And she's all done. Not. Uh, printed out this picture. It uses our Sherpa here. And here's the, uh, the board. So as always, we're going to start with the smallest components first in the Z-axis, or the height. Uh, we'll go from smallest to tallest, and that usually means uh, diodes and resistors first. And then we'll work our way up. So, uh, yikes, here we go. This is going to be fun. So I'm unpacking all the components from Mouser, and I gotta say, I'm very impressed with their attention to packing detail. I mean, they used this friggin' probably 15 cent package for this, you know, one and a half cent LED. And it's all like that, you know. I'll have one uh, capacitor, poly capacitor, all wrapped up in bubble wrap and triple bagged. So, uh, very impressive. Don't know how they're staying in business, but whatever it is what it is. Thank you, Mouser. Good stuff. There it is, we have the first component installed. Can you see it? Whoop. Got a little jumper here, and according to these instructions, that's uh, footnote three, and we've opted for the jumper. All right, so only about 
18,342 more components to go. Here we go. Okay, a little heads up here. So as you can see, D4 and D5, I should have two 1N914 diodes, and then DX1 and DX2, I should have two 1N4004s. But uh, in my um, order from Mouser, I only had one of each. So what I think may have happened is when I imported the parts list from IonFX into Mouser, it pulled up all the part numbers, but it only put one of uh, each as a quantity in the spreadsheet or in your cart, whatever. So you have to go through and double check and make sure you get the proper number of what we need. So there will probably be issues with capacitors, but um, I have, you know, obviously have tons of diodes hanging around. But uh, that, that shouldn't cause a problem. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens, see what we got. Uh, a lot of the capacitors um, I had, they didn't have in stock or were no longer produced. So those I uh, should have the proper quantity of the substitutes I picked out, but something to look out for if you're going to do this. Okay, here's all the diodes installed, not including the LEDs. Now I think we're going to move on to resistors, which will probably be the most labor-intensive part of this project. So uh, let's do that. Right, this is where we're at so far. We got uh, most of the resistors in there, but this is going to be the end of my workday on this project. Um, yeah, as I mentioned before, when I imported the parts list from the IonFX website into Mouser, um, I did not put in the quantities, so I got one of everything except for the uh, parts I had to substitute or find substitutes for, you know, those were obviously the right quantity, but everything else, uh, it was an oversight on my part, and uh, so I just put it in another order with mouse here, and we're going to get all the parts. You know, I do have a lot of, um, you know, like you can see in here, I uh, these yellow ones I have in stock here at the Tone Church, but um, I had to order some parts anyway, because some of the resistors, uh, there's like half-watt resistors here that I don't have in stock. So I needed to make an order anyway. So I decided to uh, get the stuff that Ion said um, should be used, even though this is probably fine. I didn't want to take any chances for all this, for all the reasons that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Um, one thing I did not order from uh, Mouser was um, the quarter watt resistors. That's all the blue guys you see in there. Uh, I've got this kit here that I bought on Amazon a long time ago, and that's what I've been using. It uh, should be just fine. But um. If you're getting into this kind of thing, um, or even if you're just doing this one project, if you were to do such a thing, uh, it's probably more cost effective just to buy this big kit here than to buy, you know, three of these, two of those, five of those, you know, because they certainly come in handy. And I've used them for everything I built, and they're just fine. Um, I bought this kit a long time ago, and, you know, as, as I've used certain values, they've been replaced with, um, you know, 100 packs like this and this. But, uh, See if I can't find the link uh, and put it in the description. So I'll be back next week, uh, but for you, that'll be in the next clip. So until then, rock on. 12 seconds later. We are back. So a week has elapsed since the uh, last clip you saw. And uh, put in an order to Mouser over the weekend. And Thursday morning, the uh, Ups truck dropped this uh, new package off. So let's see what we got. Bunch of paperwork. Bag full of goodies. It's like a pocket full of kryptonite. Ah, got a pocket full of kryptonite. Probably riveting entertainment right here. 
We're going to, in principle, make the most boring video because we're going to talk about watching paint dry. Bam! Capacitors, capacitors, and more capacitors. So, uh, when I went through the uh, bill of materials and uh, all the parts on the uh, build instructions, um, it seemed like uh, there was a bunch of things that weren't on the bill of materials. So, if you do undertake this project, just, uh, you know, check the bill of materials, check the, uh, just check everything. Check the layout. And uh, very methodically, make sure you get everything you need so you don't have to spend an extra eight bucks on shipping for round two. But just go through everything. Yeah, it seemed like not everything on the bill of materials was on, you know, whatever you want to call this list here. So just be careful. Get all your stuff so you don't have to wait. But, uh, yeah. Capacitors, capacitors, more capacitors. I got some uh, chips, um, transistors. Yeah. Hopefully this is everything. Ooh, got some chips. Can't eat just one. But, uh, yeah, everything was packaged well and uh, looks to be uh, good stuff. So I'm gonna organize all this stuff and uh, get it all laid out for ease of production, and then we'll pick up the story from there. Brought to life by the magic of the never-ending story. Rated PG. Now playing. Check newspapers for a theater near you. Hang tight. All right. I have all my materials sorted out. And uh, because of uh, the complexity of this build and the, uh, you know, my history with uh, Iron FX effects pedals, I'm not taking any chances. I'm doing everything very carefully. Um, I took the time, I made two orders, so I get very, uh, high quality parts and not just use the junk I have in stock. Um, I got nice Vichy and Nichicon, uh, electrolytic caps and, you know, we're sparing no expense. So, trying to figure out what I want to do next. Um, I think we're just going to go ahead with the capacitors. Um, I took a look to see where the transistors were. Because, again, we're going to be very careful. We're going to use the uh, heat sink when I install the transistors. And I just want to make sure there would be room for the heat sink uh, if I put the transistors in after I put in the capacitors. And, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem there. There should be plenty of room. There shouldn't be anything blocking it. So, yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and install some capacitors. So, uh, our montage awaits. I think I have all the non-electrolytic capacitors installed. Uh, one quick little tip here, or something to look out for. C40 there is a 2.7 micro uh, tantalum capacitor, and that's uh, this guy right here. Uh, I know it looks just like a regular non-polar ceramic capacitor, but that is a polarized cap, so uh, make sure you uh, take that into account. All right, let's move on. All right, so what I think I'm going to do next is install all the uh, chip sockets. And this thing has more chips than a bag of Lay's. I think there's 12 of them, if I counted correctly. So uh, this should take a minute. So yeah, let's do that. I thought this would be a good time to set up the action cam. So uh, I'll show you how I'm installing the uh, chip sockets. And uh, hopefully you can see that. I can't really see the viewfinder. Anyway, so when you're installing the uh, sockets, there's a little divot or indentation on one side here. Uh, and uh, that is matched on the circuit board. So you want to line those up. And um, that will ensure you know uh, the proper polarity of your chip when you go to install that. So what I've been doing here is you want to make sure this thing is sitting flat on the board. I've got uh, Mr. Helping Hand set up here, and I'm pushing uh, the socket flat on the circuit board. I'm lining up the uh, little piece of solder, and 
heat up the, the uh, pad, push up, and there you go. So I'll get the first um, pin soldered. So that'll keep the socket from moving around. And then uh, just go back and solder all the, uh, all the other uh, pads. And I start on the opposite pin when I'm, I'm doing this. Jesus, sorry for being all jittery. It's almost like I have Parkinson's. But uh, it's early in the morning. I have an empty stomach other than a giant cup of uh, delicious Ethiopian coffee. So, <laughs> And he brings this serious gourmet shit on us. What flavor is this? That'll do it. And there you have it. There she is. So we're about halfway done with our sockets. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the other half. We have all the chip sockets installed. Now we need to move on to something else. I think we're going to move on to the remaining uh, resistors. We have the uh, half watts that I had to order. And we have a couple of trimmers right there. So I think we'll do that next. All right, we have our half watt uh, resistors installed. We have our 10 meg resistor there, that beige one. And we have our trimmers installed. So now I think we're going to move on to the electrolytics. We're getting there. We got one page done. Look at that. That equals that. Good times. All right, still got some more uh, electrolytic capacitors. I have another little thing to uh, possibly help you out if you're considering undertaking this project. So as I mentioned before, um, you can import the bill of materials from the IonFX website into mouser.com to order all the parts. But there were a number of parts that were either um, not in stock or, you know, are no longer available. So I had to substitute um, a handful of uh, components. So it's important uh, that you, if you need to substitute, that you just don't match, you know, say you need a 220 microfarad capacitor, you know, at 100 volts or whatever. But also the, um, the size of the thing. So um, this was the... Uh, one I got from my first order, and these guys here were the ones uh, that I got from the second order. And uh, as you can see on this one here, um, it's much bigger in circumference than these guys here. So if I did actually order six of these, uh, they may not have all fit on the uh, PCB. Um, this guy right here is wider, and these guys right here, I think these are Nichicons, uh, these are taller. So dimensions matter as well. So if you need to substitute, take that into account as well when you're ordering your parts. All right. Looks pretty sweet, right? Look at that. It's like Star Wars. Almost there. I can't hold them. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful spring day here in the greater New England area. It's getting nice and hot out, so the dog's shedding everywhere, and I wake up every morning to a beak full of pollen. But anyway, here we are, day three on this project. I think uh, the next step is uh, transistors. So let's transistorize. All right, there you have it. We got our transistors installed, two there, one there, a couple there. And I used the heat sink uh, when uh, soldering those, so uh, hopefully there's no damage to them. Not taking any chances on this one, but uh, that pretty much looks like that. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Those look like resistors to me. Um, they're supposed to be diodes, but uh, who knows? We'll see what happens. All right, I guess now uh, it's time to start putting on the uh, the potentiometers and switches and input and output jacks and some wires, all that fun stuff. Let's do that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just some uh, planning ahead here. 
we need to install all of the potentiometers in their PCB mount. They won't be connected with wires, so where they land is where they land. So I need to make sure that, you know, they're all on the same plane. Uh, also, the there's a bunch of switches, and those all need to be, you know, when I put the board in, that everything's going to fit flush against here nicely. And uh, we're using the cutout template. How about that? So uh, hopefully, yeah, we should definitely have more than enough space with this uh, enclosure. And uh, this is the enclosure that I got. All right, here we go. Brainstorming. All right, so I'm trying to line all these up so they all sit flat. Apparently, I did not, I was not able to find any 2.5K audio right angle PCB mount potentiometers, but I just checked Small Bear Electronics. Uh, where's the mouse? And they do have 2K. So I'll order a couple of those, and they also have uh, double gang um, pots, PCB mount, right angle. Uh, they don't have the reverse taper, but they have 100K, so 100K audio. So it is what it is, get what you can get, or maybe uh, if it's looking for reverse, maybe linear would be better. I don't know. Don't know, but that's uh, an option. Uh, I got mine from China. This is obviously closer than China. So, uh, there you go. Oh, check this out. Before I uh, checked out of uh, my uh, shopping cart here on Small Bear, I'm um, looking at the clearance deals. Here's a nice deal. Three bucks, pre-drilled. Yeah, I'll grab a couple of those. Here's another good deal. They're blowing out belt and bricks for six bucks. Good stuff. All right, very important little thing here. Um, as you'll notice, uh, there's lots of uh, connections here on the back of the PCB. And the um, back of the knobs are metal, which is conductive. So we need to put something in between the uh, solder joints and the back of the pots so we don't get short circuits. Um, I've got as many as the of these Gorva pots as possible. They have a little plastic... Uh, condom around them. Look, Violet, why don't you say we go park out by the lake? My glands are out of control. Well, okay, Georgie. But are you prepared? I've been preparing myself for 17 years. That's not what I meant. Pull over to that drugstore. Georgie. Make sure you ask for Titans. Those are the best. Which prevents that from happening. But on the other ones, uh, just putting a little bit of electrical tape, and I'll probably slide a little piece of plastic or something. We'll come up with some kind of MacGyver thing to uh, avoid any shorts. Hello, George. How are you? Oh, hi, Mr. Gower. I, uh, I didn't think you worked nights. My uh, night man took sick. What can I do for you? We're having a sale on shaving cream. What am I saying? I'm not old enough to shave yet. But anyway, so I made a little shim here to try and make sure that all the pods are the same height. Um, might improve it a little bit. And uh, I'm just taking my time to be uh, very careful because there's a lot of pods here. And uh, when you screw them down to the enclosure, if there's any strain on the connection, you know, you might break the solder joints. So, you know, taking the time, doing it right. Hopefully it all pays off. And then, yeah, the, uh, we're going to have to figure something out for the uh, switches as well because they're going to sit a little bit lower. So they're going to be uh, standing up a little bit off of the board. But uh, all in due time. I've been shaving since March. See? Hey, I better call your mom right now and thank her for the preserves she brought over to us. Our... Not now. Actually, now that I think about it, um, I watched a video on somebody building one of those Chinese Klon pedal clone kits. And what he did is he mounted all the potentiometers to the enclosure and then slid the PCB over the pins and then soldered them in place like that. I think that'll work much better. I'm glad uh, he thought of it. So uh, I'm going to do that. So hang tight. I bet I know what you want. You do? Sure. I was young once. Liquor sticks. 
Here we are with the template on the enclosure, and I marked all the holes for the uh, potentiometers and the switches. Uh, I also marked all the other holes, but the um, the foot switches or the feet switch, foot switches, and the LEDs. Those uh, positions may change because I want to use uh, LED sockets, and that's going to take up a little more space than I think I have, especially for the channel one there. But those will be on wires, so I'll be able to put those anywhere. So, all right, now it's time to drill. Here's the enclosure all holed up for the potentiometers and the switches. Looking pretty sweet. I think that's going to end it uh, for this weekend. I'm uh, going to wait for those uh, 2K pots I just ordered to arrive over the week, and uh, we'll pick up the story from here. So I will see you next weekend, and you will see me in the next clip. Probably after you hear from uh, Spongebob. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. We are back. Uh, where are we at here? Day three, day four on this build. Um, got some parts in. Um, real excited about these. Can you see those? We got some uh, tensiometer condoms. Mr. Gower, I'm 17 years old. Already? Seems like only yesterday your mom was in here buying talc to powder your little bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we don't have to do this, can you see that cheese ball tape on the back or put a piece of plastic between the pots and the board. You can just take one of these condoms, slide it over the back, slide it over the back, mm, and there you go. Uh, look. Never mind. Thanks. Problem solved. Now we're going to deal with the problem of the neighbors of the noisy vehicles. Anyway, got these from uh, Guitar Pedal Pots. Dot, no, Guitar Pedal Pots. Guitar Pedal Parts dot com. Uh, first time I used that vendor. Uh, good experience. These are 15 cents each. An investment. Uh, it was a very good investment. Almost forgot what I came in for. A tube of toothpaste and a box of items. Toothpaste and what? All right, a couple other things here. Um, got these uh, 2K pots. The schematic calls for, I think, audio 2.5 uh, for these two positions right here, and that's pretty much on uh, titanium. Uh, these are the only ones that I could find, or maybe they weren't, but these are the ones I got. The shoulder is a little bit bigger than the uh, other pots we have here. So we're going to have to make these two holes right here, that one and that one a little bit bigger. Uh, this hole right here, if you can see that, probably not, let's get some light here, just a pointer out. This hole I had to cut a little bit bigger because the Chinese double gang pot that I got, um, the legs were not uh, the same distance away from the center line of the pot as all the other pots. Um, so I had to make the hole a little bit bigger so the shaft would stick out. But then I actually ordered some uh, new double gang pots from um, Small Beer. And uh, these, uh, the legs are the same distance as everyone else. So now we got an oversized hole for nothing. But that's okay. And then, oh yeah, the final thing on these uh, 2K pots. The legs are not the same distance from the center line of the pot as all the other ones. So I have to kind of bend them a little bit to make them work. But whatever, we'll make them work. The um, important thing is we got all uh, right angle uh, PCB mount pots. We can make the holes any size we want inside the enclosure, so that's not a problem, and uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, big day today. Let's get her done. Just had to make a little modification to one of the uh, guitar pedal potentiometer condoms here. Box of Titans. You have to speak up, George. Titans. I want a box of Titan condoms. <gasps> George! So it would fit over the double gang pot. 
but uh, yeah, it's going to work out nicely. So there we go. And to think you were an altar boy. All right, all the uh, pots and switches are installed. And this is what we ended up doing. I just um, put all the uh, pots in their slots. And um, with the uh, little pot condoms on them, they all sit nicely and flat and level, parallel, all that good stuff. And so on the reverse side, I just soldered the uh, center pin. And then uh, once they were secured and they weren't flopping all around, I stuck it inside the enclosure. And then on the, uh, the back side here or the front side, whatever you want to call it, did the other two pins. So that's why you're not seeing any solder here on these. So once those were all in there and they, I got them all to fit into the, uh, the cut holes, I went back and uh, loosely installed the four switches. Got the circuit board to go down over them. And then uh, soldered those up. So definitely not easy. Was there 10 pots and 4 switches? It was a bit of a challenge. But we did it. And hopefully it works. And hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully it works. You did say Titans. Oh, only about four times. Yeah, look at this sucker, huh? Jeez, um. Good times. All right, moving on. All right, we're getting down to brass tacks here. Got the enclosure all drilled out. All the holes we need. Got the uh, LED sockets installed. Getting there. So now it's time to go on to the offboard wiring and to uh, hopefully put it all together. So let's do that. We're getting there. Got a lot of the outboard wiring done. A little bit more to go. Got our four LEDs here. Ready to be wired up. Oh yeah. Alright, there she is. I think she's all wired up. I just need to socket all the chips and uh, hopefully it all works. That would be quite the feat because this is uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is about a 13 and a half as far as complexity is concerned, at least for the stuff that I've done. I'm not going to put the knobs on and all the nuts and stuff yet until this. I know this thing's up and running. So uh, fingers crossed, here we go. Alright, there she is. All the chips are socketed up. It's time for the moment of truth. Let's do it. All right, we got it fired up for the first time, and um, there's definitely uh, some troubleshooting that needs to go on here. Uh, it's in bypass mode right now, and the um, this light should be off. This LED should be off. The blue one is supposed to be the uh, on-off LED, and that's uh, on when it should be off, and that doesn't change. And we turn the pedal on. There's uh, definitely some hum. So it seems like there's a missing ground or something. Something's not right here. Thanks, Captain Obvious. And then the last problem is, uh, yeah, the compressor. Something's not right, so we'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, it's working so far. Uh, channel one. It's 
subtle, but it, it does something. Channel two. All right, so we have the volume is this one here. Oh yeah, very active. This is the parametric mid. figure out what this problem is with the buzz and the, uh, the bypass light and the compressor. Uh, but other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, the play was great. So, uh, yeah. So this, I think it's just a ground problem. Let's hope that's all that it is. Alright, so I'm going to work on that now. Bam! Bam! Just like that! Bam! 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 Just like that! There she is, baby. Look at that. Found the problem. I spent a bunch of time troubleshooting, going down rabbit holes and uh, dead ends. But I eventually found the problem. Uh, I pulled everything out of the enclosure. And had it on the bench here, trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And uh, trying to think, what did I do differently than what uh, Ion Effects called for? And this is the... Uh, power supply jack that uh, they told us to use but I just got some new ones some new metal ones that I want to use for other pedal projects so that was a difference so started thinking about that and uh, this has a metal body so I was thinking well maybe you know the body of this is actually connected to ground so I checked that and it wasn't but while I was doing that I noticed uh, dummy here connected the uh, the negative wire to the wrong lug, you know, and uh, I even made a drawing. I tested these with the multimeter to know what lug does what, and I, uh, yeah, I had the positive over here, and I had the negative on the uh, lifting ground lug instead of here like it's supposed to be. But, uh, yep, she works all better. Um, she still makes a little bit of noise, but that's to be expected because, you know, the sucker's got some serious gain. But uh, yeah, she sounds pretty cool. So uh, I think I'm going to drag out the basement and uh, we'll um, play a few notes and see how she uh, how she sounds. So uh, yeah, definitely don't want to miss that. All right, a little more troubleshooting problems here. So I plugged this into the basement and uh, even after the fix, I was still having the same damn problem. Um, if I turn the compressor on, uh, as soon as I hit a note, the compressor would turn on and then it would get stuck in a feedback loop and just and I still had the, the hum. So I went ahead and I, uh, replaced the, um, AC input jack with a, uh, plastic one. And, uh, the problem seems to have fixed itself. So I don't know why that would have been causing the problem. You know, even though I had a metal body, there was no continuity to anything. From the body to any of the uh the lugs or connections inside um but who knows it was a little bit loose it didn't have a nice tight firm fit the uh, plug into the jack maybe that had something to do with it this one's a little bit tighter but whatever she seems to be working so uh yeah and it's uh, completely silent now so who knows maybe all those uh dc input jacks that i just bought are uh, complete shit. but uh all right let's try this again all right, so I'm plugged into the Boss Katana in the acoustic setting. I really love... 
love the um, parametric mid EQ. <laughs> You got a uh, built-in coctois. Could uh, definitely get some really good corrosion of conformity with that.
well, there you have it. Um, I'm not going to do a super long demo here. You kind of get the idea of what's going on. Uh, I'm going to make some separate videos. Uh, we'll get Grim Death and Seven Semis down here to record some covers. And we'll definitely uh, do some kind of King's X cover. Uh, if I can somehow find a uh, drum track for Out of the Silent Planet or Over My Head or something. Uh, the only drum track available that I can find is for Dogman. Which is uh, kind of not what we were looking for. Because we want to try and recreate the tone from the first four albums. But uh, who knows, maybe we'll do uh, Dogman in the style of, uh, you know, with the tone of the first King's X record. But uh, yeah, we did it. Can't believe it. So uh, Ion Effects, they're back on the approved vendors list. Uh, I think it's obvious that the uh, problems I had with their builds in the past was uh, operator error and not on their part. Because this thing uh, seems to be working fabulously. So big shout out to them. Uh, go check them out. Go check out their website. Link will be in the description. Uh, they got a lot of cool PCBs, so uh, check them out. But, uh, yeah, good times. Hope you enjoyed the uh, quest for the Holy Grail as much as I did, and uh, we'll see you real soon. Done! Thanks, Mr. Gower. King, president of Titan Condoms. Congratulations, young man. You are our one billionth customer. Victor. Tell me, George, how long have you been using our fine Titan products? Uh, you could uh, say well, I never use anything else. Great quote. Are you getting all of this? Do you know what you're doing to me? The entire town's gonna know about this. You'll be a household name, George. Just like Bip, our Titan mascot. Victor. Victor. Hi, folks. Hi, George. Hi, everybody. Hey. More good news, George. Even as we speak, your parents are racing here to join you in your moment of Titan triumph. My parents? Are you nuts? I'm not even supposed to have the car. As a token of our thanks, we'd like you to have this lifetime supply of Titans. Thank you, Connie. Well, I wanted was one. <laughs> Violet! George, I can tell you're as excited as we are. As you begin this, your year-long reign as our Titan King. Yippee! Thank you.